In this video I want to reintroduce integration. Now, um, if you haven't met integration before, I would well recommend that you go back and look at the integration that is done in Core 1 and Core 2 before continuing with this. However, I will be doing a brief recap of the concepts that we need to know in this video. So it may well be that all you need is what you learn here. Now, integration is, well, is used in two different types of questions. One is in solving differential equations, and one is in um, finding the area under a curve. So, if I have a curve that looks something like this, for example, and I want to find the exact area between two values, A and B, between the curve and the x-axis, let's say this is y equals f of x, then the area is equal, the shade there is equal to the integral between A and B of f of x dx. Okay, so this symbol here, this elongated s and this dx, are effectively bookends. They must be there. The dx tells you what you are integrating by, so the variable, so diff, uh, integrating with respect to x, and this integral symbol tells you the two values that you are integrating between. The smaller value goes on the bottom and the larger value on the top. Now, the key um, one that we need to be able to integrate is a value of x to the a, for example. So we need to be able to integrate x to the power of a and know what that value is. So let's not use a, let's use n, sorry. I'll use n. So where n can be uh, negative, it can be a uh, fraction, um, it can be anything but minus 1. Okay, so n is not minus 1. The reason why we don't look at when n is minus 1 is because that brings about um, a logarithmic function that we'll meet in core 3. So, we don't look at when n is minus 1 for this. Now the value that we get is that we add 1 to the power and divide by the new power. So that you'll get x to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. So if you had x cubed, for example, you would get x to the 4 divided by 4. And you evaluate that between a and b. So let's go through an example. Let's say I had the integral of x to the, um, well let's do x to the half dx, and I wanted to evaluate that between 4 and 16. Then what I do is I add 1 to the power, so x to the 3 halves, and divide by the new power. And I'm going to evaluate that between 4 and 16. Now to evaluate it, we first of all substitute in the value 16, and then subtract, substituting in the value of 4. So I've got 16 to the 3 halves over 3 halves. Take away 4 to the 3 halves over 3 halves. So I plug each of these values into my calculator. 16 to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves and I get 128 over 3, and then 4 to the power of 3 halves, divided by 3 halves, is 16 over 3. So 128 over 3, take away 16 over 3, is 112 over 3. So 112 over 3, which is approximately 37.3. It's 37.3 recurrent. 
So this is the exact um, area between 4 and 16 for the graph of y equals x to the half, which looks something like this. So I'm looking at it between 4 and 16. That wasn't a very straight line. So that's how integration is used here. The process is quite straightforward. Um, and the ones that we're looking at here is, this is known as a definite integral because I'm looking at it between two points, two values, two limits. You can also have an indefinite integral, but that's not what we're going to be looking at in these videos uh, for FP1. Um, now these, well this one here is an example of a proper integral. Um, because the value that I'm looking at, the area, is in some way finite, because it's just between two values. But in the next videos, we're going to be looking at improper integrals, um, where we're looking at uh, integrating over an infinite amount, or um, between an asymptote. So things get a little bit more complicated from here on out. So if you are unused to integration at this point, I would go and look at the Core 1 and Core 2 videos to get yourself used to integration first and the process before you move on.